Vice President Kamala Harris said calls for Ukraine to cede territory to Russia were dangerous and unacceptable as she met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky on Thursday. The comments from the Democratic nominee for president were thinly veiled criticism of suggestions from Republican candidate Donald Trump and his running mate, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, that Ukraine should quickly cut a deal to end the war. They are not proposals for peace, Harris said. Instead they are proposals for surrender. Zelensky is in Washington to bolster U.S. assistance for his country's defense. As I have made clear on our six previous meetings and throughout Putin's brutal aggression and war against Ukraine, my support for the people of Ukraine is unwavering. I have been proud to stand with Ukraine. I will continue to stand with Ukraine. And I will work to ensure Ukraine prevails in this war. The Ukrainian people are bravely defending their homes and their homeland, their freedom, and their democracy against a brutal dictator. And the American people know well the meaning of freedom, of independence, and the importance of rule of law. These ideals are central to who we are as Americans. And some of the most important moments in our history have come when we stood up to aggressors like Putin, just as we must today. If Putin is allowed to win, they will become emboldened. And history reminds us, and history is so clear in reminding us, the United States cannot and should not isolate ourselves from the rest of the world. Isolation is not insulation. So then, the United States supports Ukraine, not out of charity, but because it is in our strategic interest. We will continue to provide the security assistance Ukraine needs to succeed on the battlefield, as demonstrated by President Biden's significant announcement earlier today. However, in candor, I share with you, Mr. President, there are some in my country who would instead force Ukraine to give up large parts of its sovereign territory who would demand that Ukraine accept neutrality and would require Ukraine to forego security relationships with other nations. These proposals are the same of those of Putin. And let us be clear, they are not proposals for peace. Instead, they are proposals for surrender, which is dangerous and unacceptable. We have to keep pressure on Russia to stop the war and to make truly lasting and just peace. It's a top priority for us and for other freedom-loving nations to achieve not a freezing, but real, real peace for us. So we need to keep sanctions against Russia strong and we need to use that proceeds from immobilized Russian assets to protect Ukraine, our people, our cities, our front line from Russian evil. And of course, we must work hard to bring all Russian war criminals to justice. We need to urgently strengthen Ukraine's air defense to save thousands of lives and reduce Russian terror to zero. It's achievable. Thank you again. Thanks, America. Thanks to you, Madam Vice President. Thank you. Thank you. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden hosted a reception at the Metropolitan Museum in New York City on Wednesday. During the event, Biden shared words of from his mother, Catherine Eugenia Finnegan Biden, who once advised him to never bow, bend, yield, or give up. My message tonight is this we must never, ever, ever bow, bent, yield or give up. And most importantly, we must never lose faith cause faith in our ability can do so much," Biden said. A day earlier, 
Biden delivered his final address as U.S. President to the U.N. General Assembly, addressing the challenges the world is facing. I want to begin by quoting someone who I wish was here tonight, my mom, Catherine Eugenia Finnegan Biden. Growing up, my mom had an expression, a lot of expressions. She had a backbone like a ramrod. But my mom, she used to say, Joey, remember, never bow, never bend, never yield, and never give up. Folks, as I said yesterday at the United Nations, I recognize the challenges the world faces. Ukraine, Gaza, Sudan, Haiti, war, hunger, poverty, climate change. But my message to you tonight is this. We must never, ever, ever bow, bend, yield, or give up. And most importantly, we must never lose faith. Lose faith in our abilities to do so much. We believe anything is possible. No, I really mean it. But remember, nothing is impossible. And folks, look. In our time, we turn the page on the on, on a whole range of issues. We turn the page. Nothing is impossible, as I said, but we turn the page. The worst pandemic in the century. We defended Ukraine as a tyrant threatened to wipe it off the map. We made the largest investment in history to fight climate change, the existential threat to humanity. And folks, time and again, I mean it sincerely, time and again, our nation and our world found a way forward. <clears throat> But make no mistake, it didn't happen by accident. None of it was inevitable. It took people like all of you assembled here tonight, refusing to give up, rejecting the forces that pull us apart, believing that change is possible, and fighting to make it so. Every single day, that's what you in this room assembled have done. I can say to you, I mean it sincerely, I've never been more optimistic in my life because of all of you, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Keep it up. And every time I'd walk out of my grandpa's house up in Spain, he yelled, Joey, keep the faith. My grandmother would know Joey. Spread it. Spread it, spread it, spread it. <laughs> Folks, remember, nothing is beyond our capacity when we work together. Nothing at all. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all you're doing. I appreciate it very, very much. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you.